Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Story number 1. Shame, written by Arthas. Humanity shook the galactic stage. Not military-wise, that uh, wouldn't make much sense for a minor race like that. No! They took our culture and pointed out that its metaphorical genitals were hanging out. That is to say, the humans introduced us to shame. You see, we didn't have the concept of clothing before the humans came. Sure, protective armor for battle. But not just to cover us. Our environments were varied, but we didn't live in the uncomfortable places. So they pointed out how quite literal genitals were hanging out which I played off as nonsense. But it ached at the back of my mind. Everyone could see. Surely, if I were to wear a simple robe, for warmth of course, I would have the side effect of making myself a little more modest. You can imagine my surprise when the next day, all of my people had the same idea. Now the races followed shortly after. I thought the humans were content with that and that they were only uncomfortable with nudity, as makes sense. Oh, how wrong I was. You see, I became the ambassador to the humans, since I was one of the first to adopt their cultural modesty. In my work, I met a group of smaller humans, female, about 15 human years old. They asked me wise questions like, Holy crap, you smell. When was the last time you washed that thing? And, oh, what brand are those bed sheets? So I met a human tailor, based inside his cozy home. He told me that he wouldn't deal with me until I washed up. Of course, I had no idea what he meant at the time, so I asked. He was so sharp, he took me to his own bathroom and introduced me to one of humanity's most wonderful inventions, the shower. He then fitted me for clothing, promising that I would look on fleek which I assumed to be mimicking the fashion on a colony of theirs, perhaps. Oh yes, I forgot to mention fashion. With what I learned and brought back home, fashion caught on like wildfire. Everywhere you went, human designers had taken root. Then came the hairstylists. They took me, as at that point I was considered at the forefront of fashion, since I had brought it to my people, and styled my quills. Gave them color and pointed them to make me look younger, more virile, as my hairstylist put it. Wait, um, you want me to look more virile? Why would I want that if I'm wearing clothes to hide my genitals? I asked. She laughed. Honey, the whole point is that you want him to wonder, not see. It adds to the mystique, babe. Oh, and if you're wearing clothes just to hide, you're doing it wrong. Let me introduce you to my friend. Oh gosh, she's gonna love you. And with that exchange, I started wearing flashier fashion, drawing more attention. But that doesn't lead to where we are today. Because when I met their soldiers, I learned new forms of shame. They came on goodwill missions, establishing bases in our systems. We were a fairly warless galaxy, aside from small conflicts. When they saw our weapon stockpile, which was absolutely larger than theirs, they laughed at the flaws. They made us feel shame about our unlocked doors, which in hindsight was clearly a bad idea. When they saw our planetary defense systems, they laughed at our metaphorical unlocked doors, told us every way that they would have exploited it. And so we felt shame and made ourselves stronger so that they would no longer laugh. The galactic stage shook again when we were invaded. I know what you're thinking. No, it wasn't the humans. We were pretty good friends. It was intergalactic invaders. 
They were too strong and ended up crushing us. The shame brought on by our defeat let us survive far longer than we expected. But we still fell. We never could see what our invaders looked like or hear their name, always staying on board their massive black ships. We only saw machines as foot soldiers, none of their race. And so we gathered today, my race, humans, and all of the galaxy's leaders packed into one room to discuss surrender. A group of their robot soldiers came into the room, pointing their arm-mounted weapons to the ground and aiming our attention to the door. Into the room slid a slug-like creature, pink, fleshy, covered in pus yellow warts. It opened what I assumed to be its mouth to speak. Spittle splashing from its mouth as the words came out. Welcome all to the Gagan Empire. You will be, he invader started, but was instantly cut off by laughter. Admiral Malcolm, an oldie human, white hair and wrinkled face. I've never seen him break composure before, until now. Are you telling me that we've been beaten by the Gujigal Empire? He laughed even harder. Why is that one... It interrupted again. Oh, God, its mouth looks like a cloaca. I'm gonna throw up if I see it talk anymore. The human president, Martha Oswald, said, turning to the side to Ratch. Why, oh, yes, it is a cloaca. Oh, if I may return to the matter at hand. It interrupted again. <laughs> You're telling me you, you crap from the same mouth you talk from. <laughs> Admiral Malcolm said, in between bursts of laughter. What is the... It started to raise its voice. However, it raised in pitch exponentially as it did so. So, it was interrupted again. I started to laugh. Admittedly, it was pretty funny. Hey, goo jiggle, you might want to get those nasty yellow lumps checked out. Someone from behind jeered. I didn't see who it was, but it wasn't human... Hey, those are my fertility nodules. Each is... It interrupted again. You're coated with dicks. Oh my god. (laughs) Stop this. Stop this. You get the picture. After two hours of what the humans called a roast, the Gugugan left the room. Head, although, and after the first hour, I'm pretty sure it started to cry. Later on, we found out that they broadcast the surrender to the entire Empire. We expected retaliation, of course, but none came. The ships just stayed in space where they were, for months, actually. We sent transmissions asking for what happened and received no response. Until a year after surrender, we finally received our response. Just leave me alone. I just was going to work in the comm station, but uh, I'm just going to be in my room for a while instead. So, that's how we shamed the invaders into leaving. Thank humanity for shame. End of story. Story number two. Everything's a nail. Written by Hidden Fox. Every race brings something new. Something unique to the intergalactic table. The Zara brought their unique knowledge of faster-than-light travel. The Kutcher brought their mastery of cuisine and flavor. But humans, humans brought the strangest thing. You see, when we first met the humans, nothing in particular stood out. They weren't particularly better at anything. Their art wasn't as good as the Winthian, Their technology was nothing compared to the complexity of the Talan. The humans didn't bring a skill. They brought a single concept. They brought a phrase. They brought every tool is a hammer. It's an odd phrase. Quite simply, what it means is that every tool can be used as a hammer. From calipers to crowbars, they are hammers. That's not the issue with the phrase. Of course, every tool can be used as a hammer, but why would you? What the phrase meant was something else completely. For humans, not only is every tool a hammer, everything is a tool. Why get a glass cutter when you can use a rock? Why create anti-gravity technology when you have rockets? 
Why have one powerful computer when you could just use four weak ones? Why use poison if you have a gun? Why use a gun when you have chemical weapons? Why use troops if you have a platter cracker? Not only is everything a tool, so is everyone. And nothing can be scarier than the concept of a living human tool. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.